Now, the people of Ireland get to vote tomorrow on whether to swallow the medicine prescribed by Europe. It's a quirk of the Irish Constitution that it requires a referendum for the country to decide whether to accept a treaty that most of the rest of the Eurozone has already agreed to. The Irish have a habit of rejecting EU treaties in referendums and then accepting them when they're told to come up with the right conclusion. Joe Lynham reports. It was a dream house which turned into a nightmare mansion, vacant and abandoned after its owner's fortunes went the same way as the once booming Ireland. Gillian Godsell still works, but she can't afford her mortgage anymore. She survives by selling her furniture, and she's definitely voting no in the referendum. This country is in a mess because of the bubble, because of the lack of, of regulation, because of the banks throwing money at people. But no one is taking any responsibility at the top, whereas people like myself, I lose my entire life earnings. And people who are even more dire situations, you know, who are struggling to put food on the table, they're all paying penalty. But, but the people at the top are being protected, and I think that's wrong. While many of Ireland's middle classes feel the same way, most of those voting no come from the less well-off strands of society. People have seen their standards of living squeezed, and Sinn Féin, with less than 10% of the seats in the Irish Parliament, have tapped into that anger by urging a no vote. I think the biggest thing that a no vote would do is to send a very clear signal, firstly to our own government, but then to our European partners, that it is the considered view of the Irish people that austerity has failed, and it is therefore the responsibility of democratically elected governments and politicians to come up with the plan B. The yes side is represented by the vast majority of political parties in Ireland. They are warning voters that if the fiscal compact is rejected, Ireland Hello. might not be able to get a second bailout in 2014 if one was required. You, have you decided which way you're doing? Well, it is a tough sell in any circumstance where you have such high levels of unemployment and people are hurting. Aren't they voting yes, Minister, because they're afraid rather than because this is the right thing, the right forward path? I think they're voting yes because they want an insurance policy of funding there if we cannot go back to the markets. Mm -hmm. And they're voting yes because they want proper fiscal discipline. They don't want to go through this boom to bust nonsense that we have seen over the course of the last number of years. And they want certainty with this treaty. And this treaty provides that. Dublin's Docklands symbolises the boom and then bust that was the Celtic Tiger era. The bridges, the banks, the hotels that shot up in the last few years showed aspiration and growth. But then it all ended badly, symbolised in the building over my shoulder, which would have been Anglo-Irish Bank's headquarters before it collapsed, taking with it the Irish economy. Right now, the Irish economy is schizophrenic. Domestically, it's weak, with consumption anemic and house buying non-existent. But the Irish export sector is booming, with profitable niches in pharmaceuticals and technology. Sean O'Driscoll runs one of Ireland's biggest consumer products exporters, Glen Dimplex. If we can you know, just manage our way through the next two years, combine that with certainty coming out of Europe, which will trigger economic growth and economic activity, then I think you will see a very different Ireland. And that is why we have to vote yes tomorrow. We're not voting for tomorrow. We're voting for the Ireland of two years from now. We're voting for the Ireland of 40 years for our grandchildren. But Ireland's young people may not be able to wait a few years. They're already emigrating at a rate of 1,000 a week, though not all of them have lost their sense of humour. I just find it kind of interesting, and I'm sure you guys have seen this, the scenes of protest, the indignados in Spain, and, and, and the, the people of Greece taking to the streets, burning down Athens, and, and part of you thinks, why doesn't this happen in Ireland? And you realise, we just don't have the weather for it. <laughs> I'm not going to pay any debt. And people say, Aidan, that's irresponsible. What would happen if everybody stopped paying their debt? Uh, we'd be debt free. <laughs> I decided to do my own little stand up. After all, how difficult can it be? And the reason we're here is because we're looking at the, uh, the treaty. And I was hoping to canvass your views uh, because, unlike so many of your peers, uh, you haven't emigrated uh, yet. Uh, so, all I, uh, all, so many are don't knows. Okay, so you're, you're, you know, you've got to vote in the next. 48 hours, you still don't know. Is that fair enough? Uh, can I ask someone why they don't know? Sir, who, you, did you raise your hand? Who raised their hand and said they didn't know? So, so why, 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 why don't you know? No pressure. I haven't really looked into it.
Despite the gallows humour and the high number of undecided voters, even at this late stage, both sides in the debate agree that Ireland faces a few more years of austerity, irrespective of the outcome. Well, just before we go 